Good morning, good morning. Let's get started seated. So come to Sakasana or something that feels a little bit like that. Maybe your ankles are crisscrossed instead of one ankle in front of the other. Just breathe through a little bit of movement through your hips, rocking from side to side. Maybe finding some movement through your neck. Allowing this organic movement to inform you of how your body's doing this morning. Any tight spots, any loose spots. I slept like a rock last night, it was fantastic. It doesn't always happen like that. And then allow that movement to come a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller until you find yourself in relative stillness. If you still feel the need to move, then indulge that. That's information as well that your body is sending you that you need just a little bit more movement. But if you feel comfortable and ready to find some stillness, do so. Find a little bit more balance between your hips on an inhale, bring your shoulders up towards your ears, round behind you, and then slide your shoulder blades down so you find broadness across your collarbones and then knit to your ribs in just a little bit. So you're going to start to tilt back, slightly closing the space between your bottoms of your ribs and the tops of your hips. And then notice if you can find a little bit more equal breath on your inhales, equal exhale. Morning, Rima. And I invite you to set a dedication or intention for the practice this morning. Whether it's just, I like to work on crow. I really, really want to focus on this one. All my attention to go into this posture or something else. Whether it's something you've been working on for some time. Or something that is just drifting into your thoughts. There's a reason for that. And go ahead and let your thoughts drift to that. Nothing too big, nothing too small. Bring your palms to your heart center. Bow your head to your heart. Take one deep breath in. One exhale, release that intention out into the world. Release your hands down to your legs once again. Lift your head up and then blink your eyes open. We're gonna start the more active part of our practice. So, from your Supasana pose, simply lean back, lift up your knees, and then take your toes together, knees wide. Interlace your fingers, release your index. Maybe bring the heels of your feet together. Notice how that changes things if it's just toes, or if you start to activate, bring those inner heels toward each other while still keeping your knees wide. Shrug your shoulders back. You're still going to find that open chest feeling that we experienced as we were uh, setting up with our intention setting and our centering. Just breathe. Notice where you're feeling any tension, if any. Maybe you feel super loose and strong. No tension whatsoever. All right, release your feet down toward the mat. Knees are still wide. Reach forward. You can release the clasp. You might even keep your palms up and let your head drop. If you feel any tension at your low back here, either back it up so you're releasing some of that, um, that friction maybe towards the, uh, the, the base of your spine or set yourself up on a pillow. Both of these things work out just fine. I'm going to actually pull back just a little bit. Let my chin drop to my chest. Feeling a deep stretch, perhaps even across your skull. Two more breaths here. And then slowly wind your way back up. Unroll your head comes up last. Arms out in front of you. Interlace your fingertips the opposite way. Release the index finger. Lift up your feet once again. Maybe even a little bit higher, a little bit stronger. Lift up to the insides of your heels. And again, maybe press your heels toward each other. Take your hands to the backs of your knees, bring your knees toward each other, arms out alongside you. Always option to top your hands down or take your hands to the backs of your thighs. You can stay right here or if you'd like to move with me for a little bit more dynam dynamic movement, extend your heels out to hover, lean back shoulders to hover, lift towards your toes. On the next step, pull everything in real close. Even reach like you could tap the backs of your heels. Inhale, take it out to your toes. Exhale, bring it in. Maybe tap the backs of your heels. Bring it back, pull it in, maybe tap back the heels. One more time like this, draw it in, come out, release down, but then immediately bring your knees up so that your shins are parallel with the mat, cross your right thigh over your left, maybe once, maybe twice, and then wrap your right elbow underneath. You can take your hands to your elbows or backs of hands together, palms together. Coming into a reclined Garudasana, bring your elbows away from your knees, knees away from elbows. Exhale, curl in, maybe even tap. Inhale, extend out. Try to keep your shins parallel, arms parallel to the ground. Exhale, pull in. Two more times like this. Long and slow, really focus on your breath. 
Maybe you're already building heat. I'm feeling it. And then unravel, immediately take the other way. So left eye over, left elbow under, once or twice with your wraps, keeping as best you can parallel, reach elbows and knees away from each other. Exhale, pull in. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, draw in. Two more times. And then unravel once again, release your hands and, uh, sorry, your feet, turn your hands down to the mat. Shrug your shoulders underneath you. Give yourself just a little bit of space. Once again, lift up your shins. Allow your left leg to just kind of dangle up. Your right leg is then extend up toward the ceiling. Right, I'm sorry, your arms up or above your head. So your palms are facing toward each other. If this is too much on your shoulders, bring your arms out to the side, okay? All right, oh, actually bring your right knee in. And then you're going to start to extend right leg up, left leg out to hover, bring it back in to start. Stand up, draw in, stand up, draw in, cross body movement, left arm comes across. You're gonna to try to bring your outside of your forearm to your right thigh, bring it back to starting position. Bring up, bring up, two more times. Really curling your left shoulder up and away from you. And then we're gonna switch it out. Left leg goes up, right leg comes out to hover. Draw it in, stand up, draw it in. Two more times like this. And then we're gonna add on. All right, the next time you add on, your right arm comes across your body, forearm to that side of your thigh, draw it back. Really curl up and over, like you're even rolling on to the left side of your body as you do this. And then two more times. Awesome. So really, really warming up core. Pull your knees in towards your armpits. Rock a little from side to side. Find a little bit of release here. Already building heat. And then bring your toes toward each other if they're not already touching. And we're going to take just for a moment crow on our back. So you might feel that you need to curl your knees back towards your upper arms and maybe even curl up to so your butt either elbows or maybe further up, see how far you can get. Again, you'll have to curl in. Your hips will likely come away from the mat. Your shoulders will likely roll away. Flare your fingertips out wide, bend at your elbows. Imagine you're even pushing the wall that was behind you. So you're really bent far, keep breathing. All right, release, let your feet come down. Take your feet about as wide as your mat, drop both knees over to the left. Keep your right shoulder gently drawn to the mat. Maybe you can feel a stretch out through your hip or in your quadricep. Knees up towards ceiling and then spiral around to the other side. Again, you're gonna to start to draw your left knee down toward the mat, left shoulder down to the mat as well. All right, take both knees back up. Take your hands to the backs of your thighs, run up and down the length of your spine. Maybe getting enough momentum that you come all the way to a forward fold at your top of your mat. If this is not the movement that you're looking for, then find another one and make yourself to the top of your mat. Forward fold. First, take a little bit of red doll pose. Maybe bob your head, maybe your knees. Get soft. Just breathe. All right, then take a fairly deep bend to your knees. Place your hand directly blow your nose onto the mat. And then on an inhale, peel your right fingertips up toward the ceiling. Maybe your right leg becomes a little bit straighter. Roll your shoulders away from your ears, reach forward with the crown of your head. See if your neck can get longer. See if you can help twist up towards your right thumb even more, press to your left hand. Notice where your breath goes in this twisted forward fold position. And then on your next exhale, totally unfurl. Come back to that ragdoll pose. Two more breaths here, right doll. All right, and then let's take the other side. Right hand directly below your face. On an inhale, peel your left and your tips up toward, your, toward the ceiling. Notice if you're shifting your weight back to your heels. Shift it forward, find more balance. Shoulders away from ears, reach long, crown of your head. Press to the right palm, so you're really looking upward. Everything is helping. And then on an exhale, whenever that occurs, back to rag doll pose, shake it up, let it go knowing that you need to rest in order to have strength. And then as you're ready, you're gonna take a halfway lift, inhale, fingertips to shins or your mat, look out. 
Exhale, hinge forward. Take your hands to your hips, point your elbows up toward the ceiling, roll your shoulders on your back, chin out, inhale, come all the way up to standing. Exhale, arms alongside your body, deep breath in. Relaxing breath out. Bring your toes together, heels slightly apart, sit your hips low. Inhale, arms come up, Utkatasana. Exhale, forward fold, hips rise, crown of head reaches down. Inhale, halfway lift once, again look out. Exhale, fold, step back to the top of the plank pose. Press your heels back, inner elbows forward, and on an exhale. Knees up or down, we're gonna lower all the way down to the mat. Keep your elbows grazing in towards your rib cage. Untuck your toes, shoulders stay lifted, inhale. Cobra pose, draw your hands back, elbows back, flare through your toes, exhale, take it down. Tuck your toes once again, keeping your shoulder heads lifted, either chin down, forehead down, whatever's more comfortable. Make your belly strong, so you're gonna kind of squeeze your hips in. You might feel your, your bum clench up just the tiniest bit, lift up through your inner thighs. And then just for fun, keeping shoulders lifted, press through your hands and your feet, lifting up to plank pose. Takes a lot of effort. Send your hips up and back, downward facing dog. First downward facing dog of the class, so maybe find a little bit of movement. Again, check in. What feels loose, what feels tight, what feels floaty, floaty. You know, are there any qualities that you want to continue with? Maybe you're like, you know, this tight, cold feeling, I'm not for it. What can you do to change it then? Is this something that is relatively unchangeable? It's gonna take some time. Recognize that as well. Spin your inner elbows forward, also pressing down through palms, bend your knees, press your, th your thighs back, so you might feel that even with these bent knees, your spine got a little bit longer. And then start to hike your hips up just a little bit. You might find your heels coming closer to the mat. Breathe. Step your left foot in slightly at a 45 degree angle. Reach your right foot all the way to the top of your mat. Setting up for warrior one when you're ready. Press through feet, lift all the way up. Arms lift. Right hip gently draws back. Left thigh pulls back, but left hip draws forward. One time, we're gonna take cactus arms, elbows like they touch behind you, send your gaze up. Arms lift up, palms press down, put on the ball of your back foot, step your right foot back to meet your left. Option to take a vinyasa, I'll guide you through coming back up again. So on an exhale, or all the way down to the mat, keep your shoulder heads lifted. Untuck your toes. Inhale, cobra pose. Exhale, reach it all the way back down. Again, we're gonna to tuck toes, lift up on your kneecaps, lift up on your thighs, Low belly in, feel how that changes things. Keep your shoulder heads lifted, keeping all that core strength. Maybe you press all the way up by pressing through your palms. Plank pose, lift your hips up and back, downward facing dog. Step your right foot forward and angle, 45 degrees. Step your left foot all the way forward, round down through both feet, and then rise up. Warrior one, second side. Find looseness in your jaw. One time, cactus arms, elbows like they tap you maybe sit your gaze up even for a back, bit of a back bend. Come back to your warrior one. Exhale, hands down. Move onto the ball of your back foot. Step your left foot back to meet your right. Always an option to give vinyasa. I'm gonna guide you through this one again. Shift forward, knees up or down. Inner elbows forward. Go all the way down, keeping your uh, inner arms in towards your rib cage. Shoulders stay lifted, untucked toes. Inhale, cobra. Flare through your toes. Give yourself some help here. Exhale, come all the way down. Chin or forehead to the mat. Again, elbows pointing up. Shoulders reaching back. Tuck your toes. Lift up through your inner thighs. Low belly gets strong. You might find that kind of tilts your pelvis a little bit. This is helpful for you. You wanna use all of this alignment to help you move. On an exhale, keeping your elbows straight up. Press up. And then up and back, downward facing dog. Inhale, exhale, slow breath in, soothing breath out. Next inhale, bend your knees, look towards the top of the mat, not an exhale, travel to the top, forward fold, keep your toes together, heels slightly apart, breath in, Ardha Uttanasana. And then fold, exhale, press through your feet, root to rise, come up all the way to standing as tall as you can get, exhale, hands to your heart center, and then bring your arms alongside your body. Inhale. Exhale. 
Next breath in, lift up your arms toward the ceiling, send your gaze up, exhale forward, fold, take it all the way down. Breath in, half lift, look out, exhale, fold. Step back to downward facing dog or take a vinyasa if you'd like. Maybe try pushing up, maybe realizing that like, mm, I'm gonna try that with my knees down. Maybe just, it's not for you. I'm gonna skip this vinyasa personally. Back to your downward facing dog whenever you're ready. And then on an inhale, lift your right leg up toward the ceiling. Keep your left heel down toward the mat. Pull your left hip back. Maybe you're getting a stretch through the IT band, maybe through your hip. Bend your right knee, open up through your hips, but keep all that activity through the left leg. So intense. Restraighten the right leg. On an exhale, take your knee to your right elbow. Shift it forward. Maybe even make a connection. Keep your heel lifted. Inhale back to tripod dog. Again, like that, knee to right elbow, right tricep. Inner elbows point forward, bumpy elbow, points back. Inhale up and back. All right, exhale, third time like this. Take your knee to the right elbow, keep your heel lifted. Inhale up and back. All right, this time simply place your foot between your hands. I say simply, like it's, it's just so easy to move your leg that whole distance. Release your left knee down to the mat. When you're ready, Andre and Asana. Arms lift up, pinkies toward each other. Arms can be wider. And then allow your hips to sink down, finding activity by pulling your right heel toward your left knee. Your left hip gently shifts forward to just breathe. Take your hands to your low back, interlace fingers, drop your knuckles, maybe even look up. Then keeping all that distance on an exhale, you're going to hinge forward. So we're playing with our balance here. You might feel this in your core as well. So you'll notice as your right side of your body comes down toward the right thigh, don't rest on your thigh. So have the activity that you're reaching the crown of your head forward as your knuckles pull back. You're really gonna have to scissor your thighs here to keep your balance, just notice. All right, release the bind, arms lift up toward the ceiling. This time on an exhale, take your right hand to the inside of your right thigh, palm to the mat or fingertips, left fingertips up. Inhale, come up, swivel your right arm all the way around. Tap the back thigh, lift up your left fingertips. Feel how long you get through the left side of your body. One more time like this. Inhale, come back to Andre Nasana. Exhale, right hand to the inside of the leg. Inhale, back to our starting position. Swivel around, right hand to the left thigh, lift fingertips up. Inhale, back up toward the ceiling. And then exhale, tap your hands down to the mat. Tuck your back toes, lift up the back knee. Find a little bit of movement, front and back. Notice if there's any stiffness. Invite some movement in. And then I know it's kind of early on in the practice, but we're gonna move in toward a lizard pose. So again, know that we're working hard. Know that it might feel a little bit different. Wiggle your right foot out to the side. Take your right toes out at slight angle, uh, maybe as extreme as like 45 degrees. Left knee up or down. I'm gonna to choose to keep my left leg up because I really wanna focus on that lifting energy because we're gonna use that later. Inhale, get long, exhale. Start to maybe bend your elbows, place your hands on top of a prop, or maybe forearms all the way down to the mat. For this variation, we're looking for a general upward direction of the knee. So just uh, don't let it drop out to the side this time. It might have a natural opening here, that's okay. Um, just I'm looking for the intention of pointing it upward, if that makes sense, all right? Keep your shoulders drawing back as you do this, really active. Just breathe. All right, press your palms into the mat to lift your way up. Come in here for a little bit, find a little bit of movement back and forth. If your back knee is down, please lift it up. And then keeping some of this momentum, we're gonna move into Malasana, garland pose. So on an exhale, when you're shifting forward, you're gonna step your left foot to the outside of your left hand. So maybe one step, maybe several. Toes out, heels in, and then slowly scoot your hips down. You can get as wavy, wavy with it as you like. And then elbows to the insides of your thighs, palms to touch. If you notice that your heels are rising up and away from the mat, you got some tricks. Roll up your yoga mat and then stand on your heels on the mat, feet on the floor. Often that gives you just enough lift. And if it's not quite enough, then roll it up further. Hands to heart, elbows to the outsides of, oh, sorry, the insides of your thighs. 
Notice how this kind of mimics that crow shape. We did that on our backs already. Starting to put the pieces together, soften in. There is softness in this pose. Can you find it? Can you bring your breath back to the place that you cultivated toward the beginning of class? And then when you're ready, release your hands down toward the mat for support. Lift your hips up slowly. Heel toe your feet back in until their hips are distance apart. And then on an inhale, come up halfway. Fingertips press against your shins or the mat. Look forward, get long. Exhale, forward fold, using all that space. Root to rise. Palms come up toward the ceiling. Big stretch. And then exhale, hands to your heart. Leave it here or alongside your body for two full breaths. Inhale, palms lift up, maybe tilt your chin up even. Exhale, forward fold. Lots of space to travel. Inhale, halfway lift, look up. Exhale, fold, step back to top of plank pose. On an exhale, knees up or down, lower all the way down to the mat. Raise your elbows alongside your rib cage, keep your shoulder heads high. Untuck your toes, nice, okay. Inhale, cobra, look up. Exhale, come back down onto your belly. Tuck your toes. We're gonna try that push up. So you're lifting up through your inner thighs, forehead or chin is onto the mat. And then you're gonna scoop your pelvis, you're gonna feel your core get strong, press up. Then you're gonna make your way up and then up to downward facing dog, yes. Emily, that was fantastic. And then simply breathe, you've got this. On your next breath in, left leg lifts up and back. Again, hide your right heel behind your toes. Draw your hips back. Maybe feel a deeper stretch to the outside of your right thigh. Maybe it goes all the way up to your hip, maybe all the way down through your calf. Then bend your left knee, open up through your hips. See if you can still keep that activity. Restraighten the left leg. Take your knee to your left elbow, left tricep. Keep your heel towards your bum, shift forward. Yes. Inhale, up and back, extend. Second time, exhale, take your knee to your left elbow. We know what shape this looks like. <laughs> Inhale, take it up and back. Let's do this a third time for good measure. Draw in, hips lift up. Inhale, take it up and back. And then on an exhale, place your foot between your hands toward the left thumb. Release your right knee down to the mat. Andre and Asana as you are ready. Palms lift up, scissor your thighs together. Find your balance. Awesome, cactus arms, elbows reach down, head lifts up. Reach your arms back up toward the ceiling and then take your hands to your low back, interlace your fingers, your opposite way. Drop knuckles, lift up heart, create space and length, use it, exhale, hinge forward. Again, some core strength here. You really have to keep yourself up. You really have to pull your left hip back and right forward to stay upright. You've got it. All right, release the clasp, hands come down to the mat. Tuck the back toes, lift up the back knee, and then just find a little movement front and back. Just shift it out a little bit. Find some movement. All right, and then we are gonna move into a lizard pose. So wiggle your left foot out to the side, angle your toes out. I took knee up on the first side, so I'm gonna keep my knee up, um, the back knee up uh, for the second side. If you took the knee down, you probably wanna continue on this side as well. So. Wherever you've chosen to go, shoulders back, reach your heart forward, get soft through your jaw, and then start to bend your elbows. Maybe you find a prop to set them on or come down toward the mat. Again, for this variation, you're pressing down through your left foot so your left knee is generally pointing upward toward the ceiling. If it's coming out just a little bit, that's fine, but we still want that intention of a pointing up. And even here, can you feel like your left hip crease is drawing back? So your pelvis is relatively balanced here. Just breathe. All right, press your hands up into the mat. And I just realized that we missed a, a critical part of our flow. So we're gonna wiggle that left foot back in. We're gonna back up and we're gonna rejoin ourselves. Release the right knee back down toward the mat and back to Anjay Nasana. We need to take a little bit of a twist flow here because this will serve us later. All right, on your next exhale, left hand comes to the inside of your left leg, right arm comes up. 
Inhale, come back to center. Spiral around, left hand to the left thigh, right fingertips up. Inhale, back up, Andre Nelson. Exhale, left hand to the inside of the front foot. Inhale, take it back up, spiral all the way around. Left hand, half side, inhale, lift up. Inhale, both arms come up. Now let's drop hands down to the back. All right, that feels better. <laughs> Tuck your back toes, lift up the back knee. Once again, scooch the left foot out to the side. It's like we never left. Your left toes are slightly out again. Shift front and back. <laughs> We're gonna move to the Malasana pose on the other side. So when you're ready, as you're leaning forward on your exhale, start to move your right foot to the outside of your right hand. One step or several. Toes out, heels in. And then start to sway your hips side to side. Make yourself get lower, 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 lower. Maybe getting to a point where you can drop your hips all the way down. Elbows inside of your thighs, wherever you go. Palms toward each other. Again, you know all the tricks. Rolling up your yoga mat, setting something underneath your feet if your heels aren't flat. Slide your shoulder blades toward each other so you can find broadness through your collarbones. We've done plenty of cobra pose here. So can you find that? Lifting up through the crown of your head. Just breathe, press your palms together for assistance. And then release your fingers down toward the mat. When you're ready, start to lift your hips up. Use your hands to help you with your balance. Heel toe your feet back in, hips width distance. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Crown of head even points down. Press through your feet, root to rise. Super tall. And on exhale, take your hands to your heart center. Leave them here. Or take your arms alongside your body. Tadasana, three cycles of breath. On your next inhale, palms lift up. Exhale, forward fold, take it all the way down. Notice that far path you had to travel. Inhale, Baddha Uttanasana. Exhale, Uttanasana. Step back to top of plank pose. On an exhale, knees up or down, lower all the way down to the mat, get all the way onto your belly. Untuck your toes. Inhale, cobra pose, keep your elbows pointed straight back. Exhale, take it back down. Okay, we're gonna try this again. Tuck your toes, lift up your back knees. If you're like, nope, knees down, keep your knees down. Everything else is still the same. Pull your hips in. Prima, that was fabulous. Shoulders up and back. Exhale, press up. And then make way up and back to downward facing dog when you're ready. Yes, yes. Keep that belly in. Awesome. Take at least two full rounds of breath in your downward facing dog. And then take your knees to your mat. Knees a little bit wider than your hips, toes to touch. Hips back to your heels, child's pose. Just breathe. Again, just taking a few moments, recognizing quality of breath, temperature of body, where your thoughts tend to go. And then, you're gonna keep yourself, your lower body in this position and just start to bring your elbows back towards your knees. Maybe you can make your outside of your elbows touching your kneecaps, palms are out in front of you. Looks a little bit like crow pose. And when you're ready, start to press yourself up to sit on top of your knees. Okay, thoroughly sweaty, at least over here. Pretty warm, maybe you guys as well. We're gonna to start to work toward our peak pose, okay? So we've done this pose already in a couple different shapes. We've done Malasana, we've done it on our back, we've done it in child's pose, and now we're gonna do it in a different orientation. Gravity might make this a little bit more challenging. It's hard to say, right? So if you've got a block and you wanna use it, take it out, put it on its lowest height, so baby bear, and it's gonna be long side of block facing short side of mat. So it's gonna crisscross your mat. You don't need to have a block, but you can have it. Um, I'll demo both with and without. So I'll start actually with. You're gonna come to a forward fold, however you wanna get there. If you need to like shake it out, then go ahead. <clears throat> but you're gonna come down to a bit of a squat here. After you shuck out your stuff. Hands out in front of you. 
and you're going to lift up your hips, but keep your knees bent. Hands come down, fingertips are spread wide like you were taking a downward facing dog. So get your arms like down dog. You've got your shoulder blades wrapping around, inner elbows facing forward, and you're gonna send your elbows back. And you guys have done this in downward facing dog before as well. It's um, more often in chaturanga. You're gonna lift up your knees to place them up as high as you can to your arms. So this could be down towards your, like above your elbow, or you might be able to get all the way up towards your armpit. Any of this will do, right? It's all good. Shrug your shoulders back. Don't get any tension. Just release, release, release. Nothing's happening. And then shift forward. So if you've got your feet in the block, your feet are already about three and a half inches higher from the ground than usual. Um, your feet are on the ground, totally fine too. Shrug shoulders back. Get long through your neck. Lift up one foot. Tap it down. Lift up the other foot. Notice where you're feeling this. You can go from side to side here. This is crow. Also, if you'd like, maybe you lift up one, you hold it. You lift up the other and hold it. You bring your toes together, you keep your elbows pointed back, you look down towards your mat, you just breathe. All right. You can come up off your block and you can try again. I'm like super. <laughs> so come forward. Rima, walk your hands and your feet closer toward each other. Cool. Yeah, 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 real tight in, exactly. Maybe even bring your hands in slightly closer. Yes, okay, awesome, keep your neck long. Shake it out, get loose. Awesome, lean forward, really press knees into your upper arms. Lift up one set of toes. Boop, yes, set down, other one, yes, awesome. And then see if you can hold up one for just a little bit longer. Feel that engagement, then get steady. Then maybe, maybe, maybe lift up the other step. Yeah. <laughs> Squeeze your knees in towards your arms. Keep your hips lifted. You've got this. Tamara, I can't see you as well. <laughs> I see hips lifted. I know you're working. <laughs> nice, Emily. Keep your gaze forward. Yes. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Any questions? Because we can go at it again. Just breathe. And also maybe even consider on your exhales is when you lift up your set of toes. Uh-huh. Keep your eye gaze out in front of you. Nice. Yes. All right, when you've had quite enough. Oh wait, I said I was gonna demo without the block. Let me go ahead and do that too. Um, same but different, right? Squat, hands down, elbows back, lift my hips up. I have to work so much harder, right? I've gotta lift up my heels usually to get my knees up, shrug shoulders back, lean forward, palms spread wide, one foot down, left foot down. Much more difficult for me. Lift up, lift up, together. Heels up, arms get straighter. Take a back look. Awesome. Ooh, what a morning. <laughs> all right, when you're finished playing, drop your bum onto the mat, come all the way onto your back, pull your knees into your chest, knees towards the outsides, so like more towards your armpits. Rock a little from side to side. What a day, what a day. And if you keep your knees, you know, if you're not pulling in too tight, you might benefit from that massage going all the way down. For me, it can go all the way down to my outer hips um, when I'm super relaxed with my grip on my shins. And that can be really nice. All right. Bring your knees in tighter towards your armpits, toes together. Let's say crow pose one more time. Bring your hips up. Bring your shoulders up so that your outer arms are pressed into your knees. Flex through your uh, wrists, fingertips spread wide, and then exhale, release it all down. Separate your feet about as wide as your mat. Drop both knees over to the right. Maybe even take your right foot and place it over your left thigh. You can send your gaze over to the left. Soften in. Just stay in your body. 
spine past the right ankle if you took that option. Take your knees up towards the ceiling and then rotate over to the other side. Option to place the left ankle over the right thigh. You can send your gaze over to the right as well if you like. Take your gaze back up to center and cross the left ankle. If you took that option, take your knees back up to center. Heel toe your feet back in until the hips with distance apart and then switch your heels closer into your bum. Arms alongside your body. We're gonna take a bridge pose here. So try your shoulders underneath you. Feel a little bit of that proper shape, that opening through your chest. And then you're going to press through your feet. Inhale, lift your hips up, a little tension to your bum. And you're doing that so you can really find strength through your core which means you're strengthening through your back. Your core is not just the abdominals on the front side of your body. Tailbone is reaching towards the backs of your knees. And then if you'd like, you can stay right here or rock them side to side until you can place your outer arms onto the mat, maybe interlace fingers toward each other. And then find a little bit more leverage because you're pressing down through that uh, clasped palms. Continue to breathe. Notice your knees are starting to come out. Draw them in toward each other. Long, slow breath. And then unravel your palms if you took that option. We're gonna wave ourselves down, lift up through your heels, and then roll all the way back down. Take your feet as wide as your mat, knock your knees in toward each other so that they're supported. You'll know if you took your feet out too far if your knees don't touch. Bring your arms up overhead, elbows out, fingers in, maybe they touch. You're creating a diamond shape at the top of your body. Deep inhale. Full exhale. Bring your knees up, cross your right ankle over the left thigh, draw your left thigh close to you. Figure four pose, three breaths. Release the thigh, place your right foot down. Other side, cross the left ankle over right thigh. Interlace hands behind the thigh, maybe the opposite way. Come into your figure four pose, flex the foot. Three breaths. Release the right thigh, and press the leg. One more time, draw your knees into your chest this time. Wrap your arms around your shins, give yourself a big hug. Draw your forehead up towards your knees. Deep breath in in this compressed position. Maybe squinch up everything, like squeeze your fingers and your toes and your face. Deep breath in here. And then exhale, lose everything. We're gonna come into Shavasana, the final asana of this class. Legs up, stretch. Arms up beside your body. If there's another version of Shavasana you'd like to take, move yourself in that position. Allow your palms to rest up. So you can find a little bit more space through your shoulders. Imagine all that work we were keeping our shoulder heads lifted, except this is relaxed. Feet flop out to the sides, all the core work that you have been doing. You're allowed, you invite yourself, you explore and invite rest. Allow yourself rest. Again, rest is a requirement of strength. Your forehead soften, your jaw release. Nothing to do, nowhere to be. Allow yourself to exist here.
slowly and gently allow the deeper breath in. And a soothing exhale. Start to invite some that movement, some awareness back into your body. Maybe your fingertips and your toes, maybe rocking your head from side to side. Maybe you're just rocking your whole body from left to right. You could take a good morning stretch, like that stretched arms to lift your head. And when you're ready, you roll around to one side. Pause for just a few moments. And then with eyes closed as best you can, make your way to a seated posture for a very brief reflection on our practice. Bring your palms together, your heart center, center. Thumbs in towards sternum, sternum pressing into hands. On your next breath in, reach your arms out and up. Palms press together once again above your head. And on an exhale, take your thumbs to the space between your eyebrows for clarity of thought. To your lips for clarity of speech and return to your heart for clarity of action. Bow your head to your heart, honoring the wisdom that you have within, the strength you possess, the rest that you offer yourself. Thank you so much for practicing with me, and I am so excited to see what you do with your practice all over the mat. I welcome you back into the world in the name of the high school. Namaste.